YouTubers. So I am sitting down to do a get ready with me using my favorite items from the month of March. This has been my go-to look for the last like month and a half, honestly, even longer than just the last month. It is my everyday, what I do, and then I show you guys how I kind of boost it up. So I go through first and show you how I do it every day that you guys are seeing me on like Instagram stories that you're like, what's your blush? What's your highlight? What's your eyes? What's your this? What's your that? I show you everything. I even show you how I put my lashes on. And then I kind of go through and show you the next steps of how I take it from every day to what you're seeing now, which isn't anything dramatic, but it's just a little bit of a kick up, adding a little bit more color to the cheeks, a little bit more eyes and liner and things like that. So I am going to get right into this, but I am going to mention first... And I'm going to apologize. I realized after I stopped the video to do my hair that I had no sound on. So it's going to be a voiceover and I apologize. That is not something I'm going to do on the normal. Um, however, I just kind of taped the whole thing and then went, oh no, there's no sound. And then I was like, you know what? I can do a voiceover on this. It'll be all right. Also, at the end of this, I am going to stay tuned. I tell you some things that you should pick up at the coming up VIB Rouge sale. And after that comes up the VIB sale. Definitely items to pick up and give a try. And now is the time to buy items that you were not sure of because you can get them at a discount. So great time to buy. So I'm going to jump right into it and I hope you guys enjoy it. Let me know what you think of the voiceover. I'm not particularly a fan when I watch people doing that, but you know, got to do it this time. So let's get right. started. Before I get started into the lash part, I wanted to give you the specifics on what I am using in this video. Uh, it is three key things. The first thing is the Kiss ritzy number 11 lashes and i do not have to cut these down but if you do need to cut them down make sure you have a pair of cuticle scissors that works best and you put them on your eye first before any glue and measure them and trim them down um, have them trimmed and ready but i use them straight out of the package they fit my eyes exactly and then i use the kiss lash adhesive the clear one today i do have the black one i'm not using that one but i do use the clear one today and then i also use my tweezer man tweezers they are great they have a point to them they are the perfect thing to use for, for getting, getting your lashes super close down to the lash line um, however if you're nervous about the more pointed edge you can use this which is sold at amazon it's super inexpensive it is really really nice for beginners with lashes it's called a twinsky or twinksky i can never remember the name but it's a few dollars on Amazon and if you are a novice to lashes and putting them on this is such a game changer because it really gets them down and exactly where you need them so this is one to use so those are the items I'm using and I'm gonna jump right in to showing you the lashes first all right I apologize for the angle it was the only way I could get this in however I am starting with the kiss adhesive lash glue and I actually put this on as if I was putting on eyeliner a very thin line going across the actual lid of my eye. You don't want this down on your lashes. You want to put it as close as you can to the lash line without physically getting it onto the lashes. I do add a little bit extra towards the inner corner of my eye and the outer corner of my eye simply because that is where I tend to, if they're going to lift up at all, that's where I tend to get the lift in it. So I just keep going in until I feel like I have the right amount of glue just where I'm going to need it to place those lashes. The next thing I do is I actually pull the lashes off and I take them by the edge and just bend them back and forth. By wiggling it back and forth it makes it more like the shape of your actual eye. Then I take a baby wipe. I keep baby wipes on my vanity and I wipe those tweezers off to make sure that they have no glue or sticky stuff on them whatsoever. And then I'm going to take the lashes and you want to put the lashes on from looking down so that they are facing up because you want the actual lashes facing up and outwards to give you the most open space on your eye. I start by touching down in the actual center of the eye. Then I go to the outer corner and as you can see, I'm just simply taking the tweezers and placing it down as close to that lash line as I can get. So that's what it looks like on the first eye. And then I'm going to wipe them off again before I get into the next eye. Or actually, I'm going to sit there and tighten these ones down. The glue has already started to dry. So that's what makes it nice is it's a little bit tacky and I'm able to go in and start placing them exactly where I want them. So I'm kind of just touching down right into the base of the lash and making sure everything adhered to that glue that I put on. 
And I just take them together, push it down. I'm going to place that down, make sure everything is touching down on the glue anywhere I can see it. That corner, you can see how I always have trouble right there. So then you can see what it looks like after I've lined them up and set them on. Then I'm going to take a baby wipe and really wipe those tweezers down, everything from the base of it down to the points, because if it sticks to those lashes, it makes them really hard. So these are the lashes, and the great thing about the way these lashes come is you can actually just simply take them and start pushing it down with your finger so it loosens the glue that's holding them to the actual packaging. So I kind of just work my way around it until I get all the way to the edge, and get back to the front. Then you tilt it down and it has this break so it makes it easier so you can just simply pull them off without misshaping them. So it's really cool. So now I'm getting ready to do my next eye, but one eye is always easier than the other. My first is definitely my easiest one. So now I'm gonna take that glue and go again at the base of my eyelid and just across without touching into the lashes and line it just like I did I have a funny lash on that eye that always stands up. I can see it right there in the corner. So I'm just going back and forth until I get the right amount of glue exactly where I need it on the eye so that all of the places that the lashes touch down will actually have glue on them. This outer corner is always a bugger. It always has trouble for me, so I go back and forth with that one. I want to make sure it's touched down all the way. So you're going to sit there and you're going to bend the lashes back and forth. Make sure you wipe your hand off, as you can see. You don't want that glue getting on the lashes. And bend them back and forth again like we did with the others, just kind of back and forth in a back and forth motion, I guess. <laughs> and so now that glue has started to get a little bit tacky, which is exactly what you need. So now I'm going to put the lashes on the tweezers and place them down, again, going from the top because you want them to be lifted up. So I'm going down and at my eyelid, and sorry, you can't see this one very well. As you can see, though, I'm starting right in the middle. I always have more trouble with this eye. It goes more straight on this eye for some reason. I must have more of a bend to this side of my eye. Touch down that outer corner, and then you're going to go into the inner corner and place that down, pulling it as tight as you can get it because you don't want any gaping holes. You want to make sure you have it as tight to the lash line as you possibly can, by kind of going back and forth between the inner corner and the outer corner, and making sure you get that lash really down to that lash line pretty tight, or as tight as you can get it. That way it makes it look more like it's your lashes versus an actual strip of lashes. So I just kind of go through and touch the tweezers down to make sure that everything is touching glue and that it has a good secure spot before I go through and kind of start pinching them on. So this is what they look like when they're on with no makeup on and just the lashes on, pretty much ready to go. All right, so now that lashes are done, let's jump into the full makeup look and we'll show you how it goes. All right, so first things first, I'm getting out my MAC Prep and Prime in Radiant Rose. I've been using this lately and I'm loving it under my eyes just for that extra brightness. Plus it gives you a good amount of moisture, which is really nice under your eyes. I find that my concealer has not been settling as much when I'm doing it this way. Now it looks like it's a lot of product, but trust me, it's a really, really thin layer. The hard, or the most part is probably closest to my nose is the heaviest part, and it just kind of smooths into your skin so nicely and blends very easily. I only use one full twist uh, before doing the whole product with both of the eyes. Now I do have a couple spots on my face right now, so I'm gonna take the Tarte Shape Tape and just touch it down to conceal those areas. It's a couple little hormonal breakouts. And so I've been using the Tarte Shape Tape for that and I can't use it under my eyes. I'm using a Beauty Junkie sponge and I love this thing. This is one of my favorite sponges. You guys know I love those sponges anyway, but this one is just so soft and so nice and perfect for getting up under the eyes. You can see the brightness already there, the difference in that. Now, I have seen people use this after foundation. It does not work on me for after foundation, but it works great before to just get rid of that darkness that's under my eyes. The next thing I'm gonna use is the Dior Forever Undercover Foundation in 035. I just have a coaster that I've had forever. It's just a ceramic coaster. You do need to shake this foundation really good, and I just squeeze a little bit of it onto the coaster and I grab another sponge from the Beauty Junkies. It's a different shaped one, but it's got a really cool large side and then a smaller flat side. I'm gonna do foundation on the bigger side. So I tap it in, get the product on there, and I always start on my cheeks. So I go over them and then I go up under my eyes and it just 
look how it goes over that MAC Prep and Prime. It just gives you such a brightness without having to do anything else except for concealer after this. It's just so pretty. So then I go to the other side, just work my way in. These sponges get up under the eye so nicely and into all those little crevices. Now keep in mind, when I am doing this, you can tell I'm using a dabbing motion. I just go up and down, up and down. I don't do a lot of like dragging or back and forth, but I do push it into the areas like my chin and around my nose much more than anywhere else because that's where it breaks apart. So I just keep dabbing it all over, back and forth, just up and down dabbing motions while I'm going around. I go a little bit onto my eyelids, but I don't go all the way down to the lash line. I just kind of take it to where the crease of my eyelid is. Uh, go back and forth over that. I do add a little bit on my nose just because my nose is uh, an area that always breaks as far as the foundation. That's where I see the most breaks. Then I take it up into my hairline, just working it around. Make sure you go under your chin and just kind of get it all blended in down through your neck. Make sure everything really blends down through the neck. I go back over my mouth and around my nose area, because as I mentioned, and then don't forget my cheeks. My cheeks have the most redness, but it just gives me a way to really blend everything in the best by dabbing it back and forth and making sure I cover all those areas that need it. So there's a little bit extra left on there, but I just wipe it off and then I'll take a baby wipe to clean it as well after this. The next thing I pick up is my lips. I wipe them off with just a little towel I have there and I love this Brazilian Kiss Lip Balm. It is so nice and make your lips feel amazing. So I just put a little bit of that on to just give my lips some moisture while I'm getting ready. I just am obsessed with that stuff. I have them everywhere. Now I'm picking up the Laura Mercier Cream Contour Set. Um, I found it a couple places. I will link it below, but I'm going to use the other side of the sponge for this. And I'm going to go into that largest one you see right there. And I just kind of move the sponge back and forth motion. And then I'm going to take it right where I would put a contour. And I start there and then I dab it all the way up onto my forehead, moving it around again just in dabbing motions, not in sweeping motions. You can see the difference in that contour slash bronzer right there. I mean, I've had this thing. You can tell it's been used and loved. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, just bringing it around up and down through where the contour would be and where I would naturally have sun hit me, the tip of my nose, and then a little bit down under my chin, just to give me a little bit of that definition, but also give you that bronze look go back through and just make sure everything is really blended in by just dabbing back and forth. I go over my ears a little bit and just keep working it in until it looks like it has just the right amount that you need. It's just such a great product. I can use the darker one and just give myself a really darker contour if I'd like to. If you see if I just touch that down and then go right over it, you can do it before or after. But that's just a great way to just amp this up and give you a little bit more of a contoured look than a bronze look keeping in mind that the bronzer is on this sponge already and it just kind of keeps blending in. So now I'm going to set that sponge aside because I am going to come back to it in just a little bit. And I am going to take my Laura Mercier Eye Basics in Wheat. I have been obsessed with this stuff. I used it years ago and I haven't used it in so long. I just dab a little bit onto my eyelids. Then I'm going to take a dual fiber synthetic brush and I am just going to blend that in. I go very gently down all the way to the lash line. I bring it to the inner corner and see how I just go over the eyelid very gentle. But I go back and forth just to blend that in. And it's just such a gorgeous color. It has a little bit of a rosy sheen to it. But it just gives you such a nice base. And these things are so tacky. They're amazing for shadows after that. I haven't used that brush in a while. Next up, I'm going to grab my Bobbi Brown Long Wear Cream Shadow Stick in the color Taupe. I'm just putting that in right at the crease of my eye, and I'm going to take a different synthetic brush, and I am just going to blend that out in the crease and up into the socket. I do not go down on the eyelid with this. And I just go in windshield wiper motions back and forth, back and forth, but see how it gives such a nice definition of the eye without putting much on it. And I just really love it. And if you see any of the lashes, that's a good test when you're moving that back and forth. If the lashes are lifting at all, and if you need to, you just put a dab of glue down on it to grab it back in. And then I'm going back into that Laura Mercier palette to that highlighter there. And I'm just taking a little bit of it on my finger and dragging it over the brow bone before I do my brows. Do the same thing on the other side. It gives you a nice little highlight without looking too shimmery or too done can put a little bit in your inner tear duct as well to give you a little bit of brightness there. I just love the way that those three products seem to look together. 
So now I'm going to grab my Urban Decay Naked Concealer in the color Medium Light and I'm going to do my under eye area. Now I just take this and drag it all the way across under my eye and don't drag out any extra but do the next side and just bring it down a little bit almost into a triangular shape but not a lot. Then I'm going to pick up that same great sponge that I talked about and go up under the eyes. I love how close this gets you and how airbrush it looks. It is just this sponge and these products together just do an amazing job. And looking up, and just moving it back and forth again in that tapping motion, not in a dragging motion. Then I'm going to grab, this is a beauty junkie brush. I can't remember the name of it. And I'm going to grab the Laura Mercier translucent powder, get a little bit of that on the brush, tap it off and just go under my eyes. It's the only part I'm really setting with powder. And I just really want to make sure that all of those products are staying and keep that under eye really bright. I do bring it around the nose a little bit just because I need that little bit of extra <laughs> so it doesn't break up there. Then I'm going to go in and grab the Maybelline Brow Define and Fill Duo in the color Auburn. And keep in mind, my eyebrows are microbladed, so I'm kind of just coloring within the lines as I say it. Start on that middle spot, bring it down through the tail, and then I go in through the center part closest to the nose and kind of just get that little bit of extra definition. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Again, starting there, going up to the arch and going down to the tail, and then going into the center again and filling out. I always have more trouble on this side than the other side. The other side's my easy side, so this one takes a little bit more work to get done. And then i got to make sure that they look a little bit closer together, so go back and forth. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is move on to my highlighter slash bronzer with that same Laura Mercier set and that same sponge. I'm going to use the side that I used for the bronzer, and I'm going to go into that bronze highlight. Again, just doing it in circular motions and then dabbing it on right where I would a blush or a highlighter. You can see the difference between those two sides right there. This thing is just gorgeous. It gets right on those apples and goes up through your cheekbone. It just gives you such a beautiful flushed look without looking overdone. And it's just such a nice, nice cream product. I really am enjoying that product. Now to finish up what my everyday face looks like, I just grab a gloss from Pixie. I don't even know the name of it. I will try and link it below, but it's just a really pretty basic gloss that I can throw on. It works really well. You just put it on over that chapstick and it gives you a little bit of color and a little bit of gloss, but a little bit of like just comfort to your lips. So it just has a pretty shine to it. I really have been enjoying this. So now if you chose to, you could just stop right here and be done for the day, which is what I typically do. So now that you've seen how I do every day, now we're going to amp it up a little bit and go into a more, not dramatic, but just a little bit more of a makeup, makeup look. The look I have so far is more of a no makeup look, whereas now we're going to jump it into this. All right, so the first thing I'm going to pick up is the Man Eater palette. I was between that and the Urban Decay Naked Petite Heat palette, both of which I really liked. But I'm going to use the Man Eater one today just because it's something different and it's so neat looking. I just love the colors in it. So I'm going to take these two center colors right here with the Sephora Pro 19 brush. And I'm simply going to put that just right in my crease using a windshield wiper motion back and forth, not going down on the lid. Just kind of going back and forth and I do tap it off after I put some more on. Do the same thing on the other side, going back and forth in that windshield wiper motion. I really like these colors and they're just so nice and warm which is right up my alley. Then I'm going to pick up a small brush which is I believe a Sephora Pro 14 brush and I'm going to take that and I'm going to put it into these two lighter colors right above it go back and forth, and then I'm going to put that just directly on the lid. I'm going in through the inner corner and out to the outer corner, but I'm not touching down on the area that I put that crease color. I don't go that far out to the outer corner. Kind of go back and forth and make sure it looks good. I think that was actually a Sephora Pro 15 brush. This one here is the 14 brush. I'm going to take that top color. And I'm going to put it just right up on my brow bone, right under my brows, just to give me a little bit of extra highlight. It's not too shimmery and not too glittery. It's just a beautiful color. A little bit on the inner corners as well, just to brighten that up. 
Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Marc Jacobs crease brush and go into the bottom two colors. One is more of a cranberry color, one's a little bit more of a deeper brown, and I'm just going to lightly place that on the outer corner of both eyes, just giving it a little bit of dimension and working it in. I'm kind of just tapping it. I'm not really going back and forth in swiping motions. Then I'm going to take that Sephora Pro 19 that has no pro extra product on it. It's just the one I used earlier. And I'm going to blend that in just in back and forth windshield wiper motions until it blends the way I want to see it so that they look as even as I can possibly get them. Just that back and forth. All right, the next thing I'm going to pick up is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Eyeliner. Um, I forget what color this is. It's basically a black kind of like smoked out color. And I'm just going to take that and I'm going to go right at the lash line, kind of on top of where that lash band is from the lashes that I put on earlier. Now, if you're not comfortable with this, you could have totally done this before you put the lashes on. You could put the lashes on later. I just find that it's fine. This eyeliner actually stays really well onto that glue and it just kind of places down and it sits right where it is. It's kind of like having a placement for it. And then I could just go back and forth and pull them. When I pull the actual eyelashes off with the glue, the eyeliner comes off as well, which is kind of a neat little trick. So this is just kind of touching it down to make sure I get it all the way in. And then I can take the other side that has a smudger to it and kind of smudge it in any areas that look like they might be just sitting a little bit funny. Then I'm going to go to the other side and do the same thing. Just simply touch down. It's a really creamy, easy to use pencil that stays really well. I've tried a bunch of others and this one actually works really well. I have it in a bunch of colors. You can tell how I'm just lightly putting that right where the glue is and kind of covering it up if you can tell as well. I do wear these without doing this, but when you do this, it's super easy to just cover up any possibility of seeing the band on these eyelashes. So I just go back and forth until it's dark enough and it's covered all the little spaces that I need to cover. That little corner there, and you can. this is a good way too to check and make sure that the lashes are all the way on and staying well, because if you're kind of tugging out a little bit and it's lifting, you can fix it now rather than later on when you're going out and all of a sudden you're walking around with a lifted up lash. That's the last thing you want. All right, then I'm going to grab the Maneater palette again, and I'm going to take a little brush that I have. It's an angled brush from It Cosmetics. I'm not sure of the number on it. I can't see it at all. It's black on the Maneater palette, and then I'm just going to take that and touch it down right where I put all of that eyeliner. I'm kind of setting the eyeliner. Now, that eyeliner doesn't tend to go anywhere, but this just gives it that little bit of extra depth. It gives it that powder to set. Plus, if there's any additional glue, like I said, this kind of sticks to that so that the glue is not sticking anywhere else. It just is a nice, it softens the eyeliner. It's a nice way to finish off the look. Go do the other eye, same thing. I'm not, as you can see, I'm not dragging it across. I'm just simply touching it down onto all the places where the eyeliner is to try and make it as dark as it can. So I am gonna go in with the Sephora Pro 19 that I'd used before. Sometimes you need a little bit of extra blending after you've done that eyeliner, you can tell where you might need a little bit more. So I just kinda go in and blend that up into that brow bone. I wanna get it fairly close into the brow bone there. So the next thing I'm gonna do is grab my It Cosmetics blush brush. It's an angled one. And the Pixie by Petra blush duo, highlighter duo in peach honey. I love this stuff, guys. It is just so pretty, so nice. It just works for any skin type. It's got a pretty sheen to it, but not too glittery. It's just a one-stop shop. It's just gorgeous. I absolutely love this blush duo. I'm going to blot off my lips a little bit, just make sure I get any of that Brazilian kiss off of it so that they're nice and soft, but they're not, and they're not dry, but I don't want it to be too much either. So the next thing I'm going to take is the Sephora Rouge Gel Lip Liner in nothing but nude and this is a really great option from Sephora that's really inexpensive if you haven't picked it up yet so I can go through and I'm just gonna line my lips on the outside area same as I always do I start on my upper lip some people start on their lower lip it's whatever you're comfortable with this color though is just the most perfect nude color that would work on anyone so many nudes I think make me look kind of sickly looking because I'm paler um, so I just take it in, fill a little bit in through the lips, make sure that they have a little bit of color to them, give them a little bit of definition, and they just, it's a really smooth lip liner. I just really like the feel of it. 
And then I'm going to blot that off as well because I don't want to have a thick line to it. Then I'm going to use the Buxom White Russian Lip Gloss. This is my all-time favorite lip gloss, guys. I don't think I use any other lip glosses anymore other than this um, for an actual gloss. I still use my Clarins, but this stuff is just my go-to. It feels so nice and just can work with absolutely any lip color. Now I'm gonna shake my hair out. I'm gonna pull out my curling iron and start doing my hair. Um, I'm using just that C brush, double C brush. I love this brush for really getting the knots out of my hair. So I'm gonna brush my hair out and you guys will see me in a minute. All right, so I totally apologize for the fact that the sound was off for that whole thing, but I hope the voiceover worked out okay. It's not something that I would typically do, but so is life. But good side is, is this part, at least you're not watching a voiceover. It's just while I'm getting ready. So I will walk through and show you a couple other things that I think would be great buys for the Sephora VIB sale. The first thing I'm going to tell you guys, and it's what I use to do my hair. And if you watch that hair video, I'm not even kidding. I was always like, there's no difference between these curling wands. Like there's no difference. There is. The T3, I got the World Trio. So it comes with these three. This one's hot right now, so let me see if I can do it. You can actually, yeah, I'm not gonna do that because this is still hot. This is what I, the one inch is what I use to curl my hair today. But that being said, it also comes with a tapered version and a larger wand version, which I do use every once in a while. Sorry, that one fell on the floor. This is by far one of my best purchases I have made this year and if you can get it on sale, do it. Run, run, run. Now, if you're like, I don't use wands, this, that, and the other, um, I will say they do sell them, the pieces that you can buy, the actual clamp ones. So just be aware you can buy that either way that you prefer to buy it. And if you are doing that as well and you are on hair products or hair accessories or whatever you want to call this, the T3. Now, I have owned a T3 for well over seven years. I Same thing, first time I got one, I was like, really, there's no difference. There is. I would never buy a different one now. And so when mine started acting up, I just took it to my other house. It still works, but it started making a funny sound. Um, I purchased a new one, and this is the T3, T3 Featherweight. I love it, but there are so many of them. And again, if you can get it on sale with the VIB sale, don't miss out. I'm telling you, it's amazing. A couple things that I have not mentioned, but are great items to pick up um, are, all, first of all, all of the items that I showed in the video today that are available at Sephora. I will pro probably try and put a note somewhere because as I'm talking, I'll try and note what's available at Sephora. First thing is this. I use this all the time. I use it when I go to the gym. It's the Clinique Acne Solutions BB Cream in the color light medium is the one I use. This is my go-to gym throw something on just to even my skin tone out. But you know what? It's so good that honestly, I would use it just like on a daily basis as a foundation. And then the next thing that I would suggest, I love this, guys. This is one of the best airbrush foundations I've ever used and it's way less expensive than others. And it is the Sephora Perfection Mist Airbrush Foundation. I have this in the color Fawn and in the color Medium. Fawn is what I would use now. Medium is what I would use in the summer. Another thing this works really well for is in the summertime, I have been trying not to, since last year, not to get sun on my chest. And I try not to put self tanners there. I use this on a big fluffy brush down my chest. Love it. Now, if you cannot get a hold of that Laura Mercier contour palette or you just don't want to try and find it or, you know, whatever have you, if you want something from Sephora, this is a great option. It is the Smashbox Studio Skin Shaping Foundation. One side has a foundation on it and the other side has a cream contour on it and you could do the same exact thing as what I did today. I have this in the color 2.1 if that helps you out as far as color and I could use it right now. Next thing I'm gonna talk about a couple brushes, the Sephora Pro 19 that I use all the time. I have two of these. It is a must have brush, guys. If you haven't tried this brush, trust me, it is amazing. Um, this is a brush I love, the Pro Airbrush Concealer Brush, number 57. I use this all the time during the day just to kind of clean up under my eyes because in case it settles in any creases, but it's great on concealer, it's great with powder, really nice brush. Another one I would suggest is the Marc Jacobs Crease Brush that I used today. And I love it for that outer corner. It just is so precise and has a nice point. It's dense, great, great brush. 
Now, I will say a couple things. A bronzer, I would suggest, this is my go-to bronzer, is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Bronzer in Luminous Bronze Light. It's the color I use. Um, I use this all summer long. I love it. It gives you such a nice healthy glow without looking shimmery or anything. Another always great go-to is the Too Faced Chocolate Soleil. It comes in a couple different colors. This is the medium deep one. I just thought of this. This is a go-to. That is a matte bronzer, so if you don't want something with a shimmer in it, that is a great one. Two blushes I would suggest. This one I've been wearing all the time uh, when I'm not doing the whole look I just showed you guys, and it is the Marc Jacobs Flesh and Fantasy Air Blush. I have been wearing this since I got back from Texas in November. It is my go-to. It has a slight sheen to it. It is gorgeous. It is just beautiful. Another favorite blush of mine. Any of the NARS ones are great, but my favorite, favorite color is the color Madly, and it doesn't look like anything. But trust me, it's mind-blowing. It's so, so, so good. My go-to, if I'm using either of those, my go-to highlighter is the Laura Mercier Matte Radiance Baked Powder Highlight 01. That's a lot to say. This thing is just beautiful. It gives you such a nice sheen without looking like you're glittery or too like oily or anything. And again, with this brush, you just run it over and then go right here. It's beautiful, guys. Um, let's talk eyeshadows. Okay, so if you cannot get a hold of that Tarte uh, palette that I was just talking about, the Maneater one, which I'm in love with, um, but it isn't sold at Sephora and you don't want to buy something that isn't, you know, marked down right now, my two favorite eyeshadows. This one's been my favorite for quite some time. Let's start with this one. It is the Urban Decay Naked Ultimate Basics. This one is just amazing. I am not a real shimmery girl, so keep that in mind on my eyes. This one is beautiful, and the great thing about it is they are all matte. Let me see if I can show you this. Except for this one, and this one just has a little bit of sheen to it for the brow bone. Perfection. This palette is just it, it's an all-time favorite. Now, this is the more recent one. I talked about this in my favorites. It's so beautiful. It's the Urban Decay Naked Petite Heat Palette. Now, I already love the heat palette, but again, it has a lot of shimmer to it. This one is pretty much an all matte palette, except for this one shadow that has a slight sheen to it again. It is gorgeous, guys. If you told me I could only keep one, this, or my full-size heat palette, it would be this one that's crazy. The next thing I'm going to tell you guys about is lipsticks, and I love these lipsticks. They are called the Lancome, I think it's called La Rouge. This is what they look like. I have a ton of these, all different colors. These are my favorite ones, but all you do is you push that button and the lipstick comes out. Uh, my three go-tos are number 326, which is this color. I guess I should show you. It's got a nice sheen to it. It's kind of like a pretty neutrally with a sheen to it. Um, 254, which is a pretty kind of like mauve natural color, but it gives your, it's like your lips, but better. And then 277, which is another one that's just a step darker than that last one I showed you. But these things go on so creamy, so nice. You don't even need a lip liner with them if you don't want to. They're absolutely gorgeous. But everything else I talked about that was available at Sephora, I definitely think that I showed in my Get Ready With Me um, are great, great options. They are favorites of mine. Oh, you know what? This is really good too, and I should probably pick up one. It's the Photo Finish uh, Priming Water. I love this stuff for before or after. And actually, let's just do it now. Why not, right? Oh my gosh, it just feels so good, and it just is so nice. And as you noticed, I didn't set my face with a powder except for under the eyes, and I think that's a lot of why you guys have been seeing that more healthy glow to my skin, and I am loving it, loving it, loving it. So that is everything that I had here to show you guys. If you guys have any suggestions of things you think I should be picking up, oh, I brought these in to show you and I forgot. Thank goodness I remembered. Okay, these are expensive, but so worth it guys these like you have to get these it is the peter thomas roth hydra gel eye patches uh they're the 24 karat gold pure luxury lift and firm these things guys are mind-blowing so this is what they look like and there's so many in here i don't even know if it says how many are in here it doesn't say how many are in here oh yes it does 30 pairs or 60 patches but if you break that down it isn't that bad and they are 
the best eye patches I've used. They help with under eye puffiness, darkness, everything. They are just amazing. I love these things. I can't get over them. So that is everything. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys are liking the kind of like, I show you my favorites and what I'm using and then kind of do a get ready with me. And today, obviously throwing in some bonus Sephora sale items. So if you guys have any questions whatsoever, please let me know. And as always guys, thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.